Oh yeah, that's it. And how long, how long have you had this operating this home? Um, you've been here from... Get rid of half of this looking shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is about all the graffiti out there yeah. and sign and like walking up. Yeah. That's always dope. My boy, his camera's in there. Well, when he gets here, we could do that and we go to the store and the studio. Yeah, for sure. Maybe we get some footage over there. I got real lucky not having to go far for the warehouse and the store. Yeah, we're good. Hey man, whenever you're ready. Word. I know you've been a staple in the town forever. Man, I remember seeing you around when I was a little young buck running around trying to be a rapper. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what? how did you get started in the scene in Portland, though? Um, well, obviously, uh, well, there's that, uh, again, I gotta, I gotta not say that. Uh, maybe you edit that out later. Burnside Skate Park, man, was my first, you know, like, obviously, I'm a skater. I mm -hmm. grew up, you know, I'm, I'm a skateboarder, bona fide brethren. That's how I grew up. Yeah. Grew up freestyling with the homies, drinking 40s, you know, um, from Cali to Oregon, back and forth. Yeah. Well, you said you moved um, here when you was two, right? Yeah, two, three. Yeah. And then, you know, I've always shake, shook back and forth from Cali to Oregon. Um... There, that word is fuck. No, um, you you can always edit that out. So, um, fuck. Damn, how do I not say that word so much? <laughs> it's impossible, man. It's impossible. You gotta... I'm trying not to say it, but then it's like... When, it's you, when was you hitting up Burnside? Burnside Skate Park? How old was you when you first started <clears> hitting that up? Had to have been like... I mean, I think it was like really like 90, 91. Like we really went down there and built the first bank. Um, me, my boy Brett, Osage, and a couple other homies, we ate some mushrooms and, <laughs> and went down there and built a couple banks against the wall, cleaned it up and swept it. Yeah. There was nowhere to skate, and then we built a couple banks and then came back the next day or two and then was just skating there, and then it just became a, a legacy. Yeah. That's... It's now like a pillar and it's uh, been, it's a been huge... It's been video games and all that. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a huge... It spawned a livelihood for many skaters to to live and eat and, and feed their families mm -hmm. it's beautiful how did you it's get a revolution like, that's been televised yeah <laughs> how did you get endorsements and stuff off like, like off of skating <clears throat> well back then? i mean i was a local burnside skater so i would skate there like literally every day like six eight hours a day yeah. we would skate at burnside so all the adidas nike you know they would that was before nike sb but uh adidas would come down there we were i was wear testing for for adidas and mtv came down there i was featured on mtv sports Huh. Um, then I got a lot of sponsors, Vans, Pal, TSA, Volcom. Like, I just like, and then I started being in all the magazines and Thrasher, Trans World. I shot with Cossack for Big Brother, full page sequence. Like, and then it just, it snowballed into like, these guys are killing it under the bridge. They're skating. And, you know, and then I was always a, a all terrain athlete. So I would be skating pool, street, vert, everything. And then I basically, when I got hurt, I just basically started utilizing my powers, my Jedi powers of skateboarding to music and producing. We have a, uh, sh obviously this is our showroom. Basically, this is all in the mix merch. And uh, we basically offer, we basically offer all this to our clients as well. We don't get the exact same. Um, item, we just, so we don't want to water down our brand, but we just, uh, we just like, yeah, this is what we do for our brand, we can do it for yours. Yeah. So, this is a new one that we, that we just did for, uh, Far Side. Cool. The hemp hoodies, is like, mm -hmm. really pretty yeah, dope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really dope. Here's, like, where we handle our office shit. I'm there at work right now. Jamie, here to that. My, my grandmother that passed away. Yeah. With the Ron Burgundy. We uh, burn all our screens in here. And then there's our washout bay, the CBD bath bomb station. We make all our shit here. Got yeah. some Breaking Bad shit. We had a couple whips in here stored. Yeah. Let's go back here and get some more. This is all inventory. All in the mix inventory. You know, all numbered and all organized. 
a while to get organized. This is one of our newest. This is the uh, leather belt bag with, with the phone charger. Oh my goodness. As I got into the music here, I was just like rocking mics, like freestyling with like Five Fingers of Funk, messing with DJ Chill. Mm -hmm. I was always trying to hit up uh, Pete Miser for beats. I was like, yo, what's up? Yeah. And because Pete Miser had his thing going with Five Fingers of Funk, I can't lie, man, the dude was killing it. He had a dope band, he was getting guap. Mm -hmm. Chill was, you know, DJing and scratching and, you know, and, and Chill was the homie, Pete was the homie. They'd always bring us up to rap. And mm -hmm. then we started Emerging Seas. Me and Ganon and DJ Wicked, we Emerge all formed together. Seas, yeah, Emerging. Oh, and uh, we did the first po hop and the last po hop. Mm. When did you start rapping? I started rapping when I was in like ninth and tenth grade, and mm -hmm. that was like a long time ago. I was at Ramona High School in Riverside, California, mm -hmm. and I had like a mile and a half um, to walk to and from school every day and skate, whatever this and that. So I'd always just like I'd be by myself a lot. So I would just start like making up words and freestyle and this and that, and then. And then actually when I learned how to rap on beat, um, just like I started making beats and then mm -hmm. I've always down to freestyle with the homies and you know, this and that. Yeah. And then Burnside Skate Park was a huge part of my, my childhood, you know, uh, so I started like kicking with the homies and we, we go there every night and we'd always just start freestyling. And then, you know, I've always been down to spit rhymes mm -hmm. and, and then I was like, damn, I need beats. And then that's when... I started. I got that first keyboard from the homie, mm -hmm. from from Zeke. You start know, that's making your own beats. That's crazy, man. Like 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 Strict Nine to is like a huge part of of my derivative of music because, I mean, I wouldn't start making beats if it wasn't for Kool Aid. Mm -hmm. If I didn't get that in Sonic 16 Plus from him the first time, yeah, you know, loading up the discs and all that. Oh yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> floppy disks, master. You know, I did have a, a SP12. You know, first before that, man. And so I was, yeah. So I was only I was, them hip hop heads know about that one. You know, boy. what I mean, yeah. I had the SB12, and I was, you know, sampling, sampling like you know, chakras and and in like uh, just octaves and, and and making beats out of just like like two second sample time and shit. Yeah. And then when yeah. I got that ASR, I was like, damn, I got like. 11, 12 seconds of sampling time. I was like, hell no. I was in heaven, bro. Utopia. It's beautiful being able to have all that sample time. And I was just taking joints and just flipping them. And and then like then I was bringing in live bass players, live horn players. And then now just, man, we just built an empire, bro. Like yeah. now I'm just like, I got like over 50 hard drives and just like over like probably a thousand mm. joints. Hey, can we do like a little uh, film? Like you in action? You got something you can whip up real quick? a lot of my production for, for many, you know, a myriad of corporations. Yeah. Uh, I was a pro skater, I tore my knee out, and I started licensing music to my corporate sponsors to get checks. So that worked out for a while. And then, then there was some corporate capitalism that came in where they wanted to keep corporate, corporate, and yeah, yeah, nice and where on. they wanted to get all those, their artists, on those licensing deals, and it cut out all the independent people trying to get syncs. So I was like, okay, cool. So. I'm never gonna stop music. I've been producing music for years and years and years. I got a little couple of checks here and there off some other gigs, uh, but just working with a myriad of artists and and being in the mix with a myriad of other like musicians, artists from all walks of life, from even like recording in the studio to going and getting meals and dinners and breaking bread, and in the mix kind of formed and evolved from just people will come through town and I would just bring them to the lab and we would just build like and it was all mm -hmm. word of mouth like literally like I would hook up with the homie and do a song with him and then he was like he would talk to his homies and they're like yo if you go to Portland fuck Omaji and boom next thing you know like my phone was just ringing and Cash was coming to town like, yo what's up homie told me to hit you up and no 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 because I always stay with the fire and I always had a lab ready 
yeah. always. So, and I've been, I've been always staying with fire, and I and I pay homage to Mary Jane, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no bandwagon ass cat trying to give up the cannabis, because I've been about it, and I pay homage. He was using it to just get the connections too. Nah, no, well. nah, I would just grow fire because I like yeah. weed. I like, yeah. I like, I like fire because I like to smoke, and I like, and then I would utilize the the herb as as the tool to like create and like. I would like to be in the lab and, and smoke and then and create joints and, mm -hmm. and be artistic and like, mm -hmm. and that's when I would really like utilize the different genetics for, for, for you know for for different vibes and energies and like you know, mm -hmm. it just so happened that that we just became like you know, f like famous. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes weed. Like even the first joint I just did with Talib Ebro actually introduced me to Talib. Like I think it was like two thousand and. I sent him a video of Coco and Talib was like, yo, I like that record. There's a lot of dope beats on there. And then, then Ebro linked me up with Talib. We met downtown and obviously he wanted some fire. And um, so we linked up. And then after that, then boom, we just we went to the studio and did a joint. Yeah. And it wasn't like, yo, you need to pay me or anything like that. It wasn't on that. It was like, yo, we were just kicking in and he was in the mix. <laughs> So let me open up the windows, you'll probably get better light. Uh, or I can do like a stage in here, big screen. I figured out like quite the layout yet, but mm -hmm. the paint are gonna come tomorrow. This is probably about a week and everything will be clean and done. Uh, new floors coming in, new bathroom. There's an uh, entrance in the back. It's kind of rough right now, but mm -hmm. oh, doing a deal with um, We Are Native Youth, so part of the sales from these are gonna go to We Are Native Youth. Uh, <laughs> I was sick. So this is a uh, video with uh, Dre and Easy son, and uh, yeah. DJ Wicked, and Boy Paris Jackson. It's unreleased, it's unreleased. Every woke in morning, eyes open, feeling blessed. Never know what you're calling to be falling, so jet rest at ease, please. Seems the only thing to cure the disease is cheese. So this is how the actual video is gonna drop, so it's actually, a vape pen. So oh. basically I patented uh, this patent right here as a USB drive and a USB charger for this vape pen. And this screws on here. Damn. So basically this screws in your computer or your car and then the track and the video will be on this drive, this USB or Thunderbolt drive. <laughs> that's how I'm actually releasing the video. So that's what's been taking so long about dropping the video is because is is the way I want to drop the video because I just didn't want to put it up on YouTube and then it, you know get some likes and this and that. So. Basically, in the mix was uh, the music. Obviously, it's hard to make a living off selling music, so especially now. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah, everything's streaming this and that. But at the end of the day, uh, I had to like find another outlet to generate revenue streams. So we started making shirts and hats, and then people were really feeling what we were doing, and we're like, man, we should just run this into a whole different apparel accessories, brand and a movement, and then we just kept growing and growing and evolving, and I feel that in the mix logo is, is, is more powerful than, than any logo out there in the world. For sure, it definitely because stands for something. Because a six-year-old could look at the logo and be like, that means unity and that means love, mm -hmm. and that's what it is, and All that's, love, and that's yeah. what it has been. Is this the right door yet? Four. Your shop? Yeah. Oh, um, we're open, Oh, we're not open. You're not? No. See, that's what I was wondering. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I peeked, my, I peeked in here. I was like, what the fuck? I've never seen this place before. Yeah, it's a hidden gem. Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No I'm worries. Nice. Mr. Electric. All right? Nice. Fuck, yeah. this Come through anytime, bro. We're just filming an interview right now for the situation, but. Cool. Yeah. love, man. That's some straight in the mix shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Chips, I don't know, uh, I got, it's like, yeah, I'm just going down for the whole Pop the Julio, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man. man. <laughs> you didn't see the Julio? Days walking this journey. I can do is keep it jumping. Yeah, you know I love it. First product of the dream. 